despite the turmoil, despite the difficulties, Iowa football is 4-1, and one, heading into a showdown with a new-look Purdue Boilermakers squad, a team that once again features a former Hawkeye as one of their best skill position players. This year, it's Tyrone Tracy at running back. We'll talk all about that matchup here later today. But first, wanted to give you some final thoughts after finally being able to watch back the Iowa-Michigan State game, including on Deacon Hill and this offense. But first want to thank Ascent Nutrition. I've talked about their lion's mane mushroom at length. Their new lion's mane mushroom has been shown to support brain health, memory, healthy stress response, overall immune system health. You can mix it into yogurts, juices, smoothies, cereals, granola, any foods really quite easily. And it's great to pair with the algae oil DHA if you're already taking that. Great products through Ascent Nutrition. Use the code Hawkeyes for 15% off your total order. Again, that's the code Hawkeyes at GoAscentNutrition.com for 15% off your total order. All right, so Iowa-Michigan State, a final look. After further review of the game, I got a chance to actually watch the entire game back again last night. And as I watched the game back, a couple things stood out on tape. First of all, several standouts in this game and a couple of guys that maybe have been a bit quiet up until this point. And I probably talked a little bit about this during the post-game show on Saturday with Coach Don Patterson. But let's start with YA Black. I thought the 315-pound defensive tackle was really, really good on Saturday. Getting into the backfield, disrupting things. And with his size, people have compared him in size to a guy like Carl Davis, who took a while to catch on at Iowa, ended up having a really solid NFL career. YA Black is getting the attention of NFL scouts right now. He played really well on Saturday. Nick Jackson won co-defensive player of the week. He's been really good as the season has went on every game. It seems like Nick Jackson has improved and become more acclimated to the Iowa defense and that 4-3 look and really the 4-2-5, which Iowa runs a lot now with Sebastian Castro. Xavier Wampa played really well, got into the backfield a lot. He seems to be getting to the ball faster. He's been more aggressive. We haven't seen him really cash in on a lot of uh, interception opportunities this year, but those are probably to come as he continues to get more comfortable at safety. And, of course, Cooper DeGene. Boy, we talked about him. He was our RTI Threads player of the game on Saturday. The interception in the end zone, I mean, he looked like the receiver on that play uh, on the pass from Noah Kim in the end zone. I mean, he broke on the ball beautifully, got one foot down in the back of the end zone, and then just kind of walked off the field like nothing had happened. That's his expectation. That's the expectation of play for a young man from Odeville, Iowa, who's going to be playing – in the league for years to come. And boy, the kid just carries himself well. So proud to be connected with RTI Threads and Cooper DeGene's official apparel company for our post-game coverage. But again, he just played tremendously well. And how about Drew Stevens? Four of four field goals, 53-yarder, a big 53-yarder in this game. Of course, in, in these types of games, you have to be able to have field goal kickers that make kicks. Michigan State's kicker made a 58-yarder that really gave them momentum at the end of the first half. Torrey Taylor was really good as well. We saw Eric All with a crucial fumble against Penn State early the week prior in Happy Valley. And boy, now in the last few weeks, he's lost a good friend in Luke Lachey. He's lost a really good friend in Cade McNamara due to injury. And now, you know, you're going to be looking at a guy who is the weapon in this offense. He looked like that on Saturday. He had a touchdown, the one touchdown catch of the game for Eric All, where he powered through like four or five defenders, never actually got taken down on his way into the end zone. He was really, really good. And so, again, this is all positive news. That defensive line, I brought up the defensive line in YA Black because they need a boost. It seems like that unit, although we raved about that unit preseason, about the depth, and I stand by that. They've actually stayed pretty healthy up there. They really have not had that game breaker, the A.J. Epinesa, Drew Ott, Lucas Van Ness, uh, type that has been able to get to the quarterback consistently. Iowa, I think, dead last in the Big Ten right now in sacks. And teams are playing them differently. I understand they're getting the ball out of the pocket quickly. But I think you watch the Michigan State game, that wasn't necessarily as apparent, especially after they lost their star tight end during the game. I did feel like Noah Kim held the ball a little bit longer, and Iowa had some opportunities at some sacks. They get pressure on the guys back there. And again, Y.A. Black was a big part of that. But that's somewhere where I'm sure Kelvin Bell, Phil Parker, Jay Neiman are still looking to improve with this defense. It sounds like, we haven't talked about this in the show, but it sounds like the NCAA is going to be revisiting their gambling rules and their punishment discipline for student-athletes who have been accused of gambling, which could mean the return of Noah Shannon this year, the reinstatement of a guy who's transitioned to more of a coaching role for this football team. Wouldn't that be a boost for this defensive line? Ontario Thompson, I know, was out last week. He's not been getting reps along that defensive line, but he is a young up-and-comer who could end up being that type of a, a jailbreaker, game-breaker for Iowa's defensive line 
we'll see. But again, I thought the defensive line looked better primarily because of the impact of YA Black. They just don't have that physical specimen at the end that we're used to seeing, at least that's developed at this point. Maybe Brian Allen will turn into that eventually, but again, not as of right now. As far as the offensive line is concerned, I will say this. I was a little bit low on the offensive line after the game on Saturday. I think I was a little bit uh, still in the limelight of that Penn State loss and how bad pass protection and run blocking was in that game. I thought pass protection was better. Going back and watching the game on Saturday against Michigan State, I thought that offensive line actually held up better than uh, I did you know, a few minutes after the game was over. Um, for the most part, they protected Deacon Hill, and Hill – not being gimpy like Cade McNamara, even though Deacon Hill is all six foot three, 260 pounds that he's listed at, he is more mobile because he's healthy. And so that's going to help them. I will say Deacon Hill, he made some impressive throws. Uh, he had a rollout left where he turned the body back right and made an impressive throw down the football field. Had a pass play uh, kind of to the right hash to Caleb Brown that was dropped. Obviously, they had six drop passes um, on Saturday. That's got to be improved. That was a, a big talking point during media availability with Kelton Copeland on Wednesday. But I thought Deacon Hill was pretty good. He wasn't great. He was pretty good. Made a couple of questionable decisions. But now he's got a full week to prepare for Purdue. And I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how Iowa's uh, approach to offense changes. Will it change at all? I would think it would have to. It should, given the fact that just having Deacon Hill, a healthy Deacon Hill, opens up the QB boot, opens up the QB sneak, things that they were not comfortable running with Cade McNamara at the helm, and he's got a big arm. We talked to J.T. Stone, published an interview with J.T. Stone, Deacon's high school coach, actually talked to him back when Deacon committed, published that on the channel, I believe, yesterday. And if you haven't checked that interview out, check it out, because J.T., obviously, he's a little bit of a homer. He's biased toward his guy, Deacon Hill, but he raved about his ability to throw the ball downfield. And other people, even back in high school, compared Deacon Hill to Big Ben Roethlisberger. Now, Again, that's those are big shoes to fill. But the point is, could he be that big body type that uh, can get the ball downfield, doesn't need to be real mobile? If that pass protection can hold up, they can probably survive without a ton of mobility back there. They did that for the most part with Nate Stanley. He wasn't very mobile back there. But for the most part, pass pro was okay during Nate Stanley's tenure, with the exception probably being 2019. So those are kind of my... Uh, thoughts following the game after watching the game back after further review of Iowa, Michigan State. So nothing earth shattering, groundbreaking. But again, I was encouraged by the play of several standouts, especially watching the game back again. I was more encouraged by the offensive line. And I was pretty consistent with where I feel about Deacon Hill. I needed to see another week of Deacon and see what he does uh, in his first career start, which he'll get this Saturday against Purdue. And uh, I'll tell you what was really confusing. One final kind of random thought from Saturday. It took me a while during the actual game to realize that you've got a guy whose last name is Kim at quarterback for Michigan State and a guy whose last name is Kim at kicker. I just thought that was really strange. And uh, anyways, finally came to terms with that. Iowa Purdue this Saturday, folks. Talked about it. Big game, 2.30 p.m. Central Time. I'll be live with you following the game with Coach Don Patterson for post-game coverage featuring you, our chats, our callers, all of that right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm following Iowa Purdue, which is a 2.30 p.m. Central kick on Peacock from Kinnick Stadium. We'll talk to you Saturday evening.